started. Thank you for joining us as we elevate the Black entrepreneur experience by interviewing CEOs, thought leaders, innovative thinkers, and Black entrepreneurs across the globe. I'm your host, Dr. Francis Richards. Are you a business owner trying to reach your full potential through, you know, in, through, let me start that again. Are you a business owner trying to reach your full potential through innovation and effective digital marketing strategy? Our founder of Ronke's Best Digital, welcome Alaronke M. Bello. Oh, thank you for having me here. It's really my pleasure. I've given our audience yeah. such a brief bio. Why don't you fill in the gaps and share with us about you and your business? Tell us about your business. Okay, um, let me start from myself. I am Ronke Bello. I'm the founder of Ronke Best Digital, a digital marketing agency that hopes to help businesses to reach their full potential with the help, uh, with the help of, of, of digital marketing strategies, helping businesses to be online. You know, uh, these days. Business has left the, the usual way, and then businesses find it difficult to, to deal with the online world. So it's our, our responsibility, we take it upon ourselves to help businesses to find a way online to set their visibility, reach their audiences, and then get the full potential with the online world. And how did you get into this work? Well, it all started in, well, it actually started in 2020, the real work. But then, before then, it has been a passion. I have passion for business, even while I was, I was uh, let me say, secondary school, because my, my two parents are business people. So one is into selling of provision and food solve, and one is a building contractor. So they, they integrate me into business, but that's not online, you know, the brick and mortar business. So after 2022, there was this pandemic and, you know, everybody has to be seated at home. Then that was the time I got a, an opportunity to go to, uh, to learn um, this course from Google the Google University. So having uh, learned that, it opened my eyes to, to the opportunity online. And shortly after that, I came into contact. You know, that, that uh, pandemic period gave us time to be at home. So I was with my phone. I was almost strolling through my phone because there's nowhere to go. There's, we just seated. So I came into contact with a challenge that's being organized by UNICEF in conjunction with Yuma Africa. So there were, there were different challenges, uh, problems that we had to solve. So I took interest in the digital, uh, the head of digital marketing to help with the current problem of the world because we know that it's, it's going to have to disrupt the economy in one way or the other. So I took the challenge. I prefer some solutions. No, in the course of the challenge, I could see that, oh, I could do even more with this because I prefer some solution. And when others were to mark my solution, it, it was rated, the list of my solution was rated four over five. That was the list. So it got me excited. So I want to go into online marketing. So later on, I got uh, some group of people that said, okay, it's their player helping people like, like myself to learn uh, online marketing. I also enrolled with them. They introduced me to freelancing on Fiverr, on Upwork. So I started, you know, somebody like me who has known the way of business, the brick and mortar, now coming online, you know, the, combining the two knowledge, now helped me to see that, um, instead of only be this freelancing, going from one platform to another, I can set it up as an agency myself, whereby I could source my own customer, without having to rely on the freelancing platform. So I started it and then I, I set up my own website. You know, I'm a website designer, so it's not difficult for me to do. I got my domain, I got my um, hosting, I created it. I also did some courses to help enlighten my, my knowledge. And then 
I took over it like that. So I, was, I began helping businesses. And so tell us one of your amazing stories about one of your clients, your success stories with one of your clients. You don't have to give the name. Okay. To share one Let of your. Share. Okay. Uh, I have, I have uh, a wonderful lady. Oh, it's not even a lady. It's, it's she's a grandma. She's she's an amazing woman. She even gave me um, a review, which I placed on my on my website. A video review. I've been working with her, I think over a year now, over a year, and she's very happy with my work. I hope to send an uh, email newsletter to uh, to our uh, customers, and then I do give her technology world and. The business is growing. I also have uh, another wonderful woman. Uh, is a Jewish woman, uh, a, a writer to be precise. And um, she's an hotel. She's like, okay, is this a one? Is, and she also is an award-winning hotel. And I help maintain her website, help me to, to showcase her work. And she's always been happy about the work. You know, he will say thank you because a uh, part of the process, the success stories that she has been getting, she's getting different award for a book, different exposure for a book. So that's it's been amazing helping businesses. Thank you for that. Fill in that's the fun. blank. Thank you, pandemic, because I didn't get a question. Thank you, pandemic, because because you afford me the opportunity. To know that I can own a business on my own, even without having to know many people or going through the, the thing, you know, if you have to have a, a physical business, it's rigorous. But this online world exposed us. I used to say pandemic turned the table. So and it turned the table and gave me the assets to be part of those that will be seated on the table. So I, I thank Pandemic for that. What do we not know as business owners about the digital marketing industry that we should know? Okay. Many businesses that I've worked with from my conversation with them, they don't know that the online world is somehow similar to the physical world, just that we are not dealing with physical interaction. They do see uh, the online world like we go there to perform the magic. So it takes long before we could convince them that, okay, now let's look at it in the area of the physical. Of course, there, there is a little difference, but then they are similar. We're still doing with, dealing with human beings. They are not gross, even though they are, not, they are not physical. So then we have to appeal to them as in the physical world, not because they are online and we can handle them anyhow. So uh, many businesses do not know that the online world is also as similar as the physical world, even though there's, there are light differences. And also many people do not also understand that when we call, um, talk about digital marketing, is different from selling. So, also, we want to uh, offer them digital marketing. You no, know, because we are professional, we from our mind, we are selling them. We want to offer them exposure that will make them to get to meet potential customers. But in their own mind, they'll be like, we want to get them, the actual people, come and buy, come and buy, and then we want to give them customers. So it's difficult to now say, it's not, it's not it. We, are, we just know that the more exposure, the more opportunity, and the more opportunity, the more sales you're going to have. But many businesses do not know that. And we wish they know that because it makes our work easier if they understand us that way. There are so many brands and businesses are dominating. Talk about a brand or a business that's dominating that you admire and why. Okay. The business that is dominating the digital world, right? Just any business. What business do you admire that's dominating? And what business that you know of that's dominating? It can be in digital. It can be in retail, any industry. 
What is a business that you know that is dominating that you admire and why? Okay. I admire Neil Patel Agency. Yes, he's dominating the digital world. I do follow him. Look, uh, check his strategies. You know, he, he do videos, write content about strategy, SEO particularly. And that's what intrigued my uh, interest in SEO. I'm, I so much have passion for SEO because it helps to get the highest of the exposure you know, when you are at the top. So Neil Patel is a kind of business that I admire. And why I admire him is because he's, he has this success story when it comes to search engine optimization. And it's really helping. So that's, that's the kind of business. Yes. And he's been out there a long time. He, yes, he has yes. really been out there a long time. Yes, I understand. What is your zone of genius? Okay. Relating to my business or just any your zone of genius, what do you think your superpowers is? Well, I would say design thinking. You know, and that's why you know when I when I communicate, I communicate deeply because I don't take things from the surface. So I would say when it's I would say it's design thinking, thinking deep, taking situation deeply, whether it is have to do with interpersonal relationship. I, let me say, I look at the intent. I have that genius in looking at the intent. You no, know, and it's, it also helped me in dealing with people too. Okay. What is your biggest takeaway from our conversation today? What do you want the audience to leave with? Okay, well, for my fellow entrepreneur, Matthew the niche that they are, I want them to take away that the time is now to start. Because I believe there are so many people out there, and most especially even with a technology, they're so scared about technology. They don't want to come outside. So I want them to take away that they can do it. The online world is not that scary. People might have been saying technology is hard. You have to do the understand this. You have to understand this. Technology is not that hard to understand. It just takes the ready mind to learn to push themselves outside. And if it's an opportunity for, let's say somebody who's an introvert like myself, you know, uh, I it take me years to get to this level of having to face camera, having to stand in front of people, you know? But you know, the online world, you can stay behind the camera by writing because that's even actually why I started. I love to write. You won't know me. I won't see you. So there's no need to be shy. I'm putting my word into writing. So I want them to take away from this uh, conversation that they can start. In fact, this is the right time. The world is waiting for them to start no matter how. Let them start now. And with time, they're going to get it. And what kind of content do you like to write? Well, when I, initially when I started, when it has not come into the area of business, I like writing about my religious belief. So that was where I started. So I write about my religious belief when I read the Bible and I, I see, oh, this is an, a revelation. I'll write about it. So I also found out that in, in the course of surfing the internet, I, I see that many people have problem with relationship. So, and to me, it's really like, this is actually not a problem. And I said, my area of genius is this design thinking. I'll be like, this is actually, there is a solution for it. So I do write about it. Then, before I now get uh, exposure, the 2020 pandemic gave me exposure that I could also help businesses with this. So now I am writing about open businesses. 
to to grow. And even I also have a passion because right now, you know, my uh, country, the, the youths, they have this um, mentality that they have to have white collar job. That's what we'll be trained in school. So that, okay, if you don't have government job, then your education is, is a waste. So I try to educate them that school is not actually for us to go there and come and get a, a white collar job or a government job. It's just for us to expand our mind, to know that, okay, you can do this and you can do that. It's for us now to sit down. I have a write-up about that, that people are misunderstanding knowledge, wisdom, and our oh, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. So now we get the knowledge. Most people get the knowledge. They don't actually understand. Because if they do understand, they will derive wisdom from it. And it's for us that we can also create our own business rather than seeking for government job. So I do write about that too. Advice you wish you had followed? Well, the advice I wish I had followed is to have my own business. Although, well, God understand, had it been maybe I had the third earlier, you know, I could have gone much farther. But I still thank God. At least I started anyways. And that's the key. You started. What yes. problem exists in the world today that you'd like to solve? The major problem is poverty. Poverty. I, I, let me say I hate it with passion. And I do, I don't like seeing people in the States. Most especially when I know that you can do things to help yourself from this state. So the major problem, I do have passion to change if I, although I'm, I'm trying, not that let me say if I have the opportunity because there's always that opportunity to do it. So I'm trying at least to the best I can do for now with my pen, let me, let me say with my pen on paper, and also putting out opportunity out there on my Facebook, I'll say, you can do this, you can do this. And as a result of that, I also have a, a kind of business model to help people to at least get daily needs. So in, because in my country, for instance, um, the um, techno, uh, let me say network industry, like Glow MCN, is, we do it by individual. So it's not that we'll pay somebody and then we'll get it. You have to buy it individually by yourself. And that, I see an opportunity in that area too. So I venture into it. I have a website about that. And the major aim is to also now have people who will be able to register on that website. And then they will be able to sell to their customer without having to have huge capital because we know for startup, you no, know, the capital is always the problem. I don't have much. I would have done this. I would have done this. But now I try to simplify it to to the merest minimum. And even um, this um, January, I created a course on that we help people to understand the business model. I ran and hard for it so that people will get to it. And I have a lot of people registered on that website, and they are making their daily living through that. So it's my, it's my passion, it's my aim to help people out from that poverty zone. I don't like it. And share with our audience what country you're in. I'm from Nigeria. Thank you uh, for sharing The giant that. of Africa, let me say that. <laughs> yes, I wanted the audience to know that. Let's talk about legacy. When it's all said and done, how do you want to be remembered? I want to be remembered as that one lady that helped people in every way she can. I want to be remembered as that one lady that people say, okay, because of wrong care, I am able to stand my business. I am able to know that I can do it. That's what I have, I want to be remembered for. 
somebody will say, okay, if not that I came in contact maybe with a content or with a personality, my mindset would not have changed. So I want to be remembered as someone who transformed lives. And what can we do right now to support your business? Oh, it's still in the area of the exposure. Business stand with exposure. So to support my business referral, of course, is part of exposure. Sharing my links is part of exposure. Just making the world to know that there is a business model that could help them have their business stand online. The exposure aspect is a major. What is the best advice you were ever given? <sighs> Let me try to remember the best advice. I think when I was in when I was in the university, because of the way I went to the university, you know, I I had to I had to be sponsored because immediately, okay, let me say almost immediately I wanted to start my final exam in the secondary school. We call it secondary school right here. I think over there is college. My father died, so I had to write the exam anyways. But that space a barrier on going to the university. So, but let me say, I, I found favor and I was being sponsored to the university. But at a point in time, because of the hardship, I wanted to quit. I wanted to, to pull out because I was like, I'm losing my mind. But the best advice I was give, given them was, what's your, uh, uh, the time you spent there, is not as much as the one that remain. Why not keep going and then finish it? So that's what made me to finish up the school. And our sincere sympathy for the loss of your dad. I want you to have a monologue. I want you to name this person, okay. living, living or not, this person has inspired you so okay. much. What are you saying to this person? Okay. And who is this person? Okay. Um, this person, okay, let me say it's actually the person that that for me the opportunity and that's um a sees Rosaline uh Conde. I want to say a very big thank you to her. She, when sometimes when I remember um those times that we were together, that it seemed as if she's she's been too hard, and now that I get a better understanding, I'll be like, wow, thank God for her, thank God she did that. So I want to say thank you to her. I want to say I really appreciate. Who are your top two influencers? or mentors, and what lessons do they teach you? Okay. Let me, okay, as a mentor, I'll say this, this woman that I mentioned now, Mrs. Rosalyn, because she's married. She did two professional courses while I was there, while married and with children. So that was a challenge to me that there's nothing that can stop you. For somebody who is married with three children, her husband, and she was she was working and was also doing two professional courses. I, I knew it's it's it takes a strong mind. She was able to do it. So I would say she's my mentor to go through anything, no matter what. And I can give anything that I set my mind to. It was not easy for her because I was living with her, but she did it. She had this, we, we all know that ICANN is, is not, is not a, a, a child play. So she did one that is, is recognized here in Nigeria. And then she did one that recognized internationally. So that one, 
she has to go for two, she has to go for two two course training. So she was suff uh, suffering from two states in Nigeria. So and with a distance of let's say over three thousand kilometers apart, she was going every weekend. So I would say she's my mentor, and I learned that from her. So when it comes to somebody that I look up to, of course I'll say this: these our uh, the richest man in Nigeria and also in Africa, and Ali uh, Kodanguti. When I heard the story it inspired me she's i mean it was told he started from selling one biscuits one petty stuff like that but then she kept he kept going and today he's been recognized as the richest man in africa and she is he's still going so i look up to somebody like him what is the milestone that you want to accomplish this year for your business Okay, I, okay, let me say, I want to increase my level of exposure. Of course, right now by Girl Squeeze, it's, it's spread across country. You no, know, this online has given us the avenue. We don't have to, to be caged to our locality. So, so I want to reach more countries. And even those countries that I've reached, I want to reach more people in that country too, because there are many people to reach. The big businesses are erupting every day. So I want more exposure in those countries. Okay. The word is listening. What is that resounding sound or message that your generation is saying we should be listening to? Okay. That resounding sound, although people say it's it's motivation, it's motivation is not real, that you can do it. Although people say, no, it's a lie, it's because they have the opportunity, it's because they have the, the avenue to do this, it's because they have the avenue to do this. Um, that's why the term motiva uh, motivational speaker. But when I go to the reality, I understand that what you're seeing is true. We can do it no matter how. If you lost everything and you had to rebuild in 30 days, what industry would you go into and why? Oh, I would say, say this online, digital services, digital products. And the reason being that, you know, I said I am this reserve person. I don't actually really want to do with physical being, you know, because I'm an introvert, let me admit that. So now I would say it's still online because it's afforded me the opportunity to be myself behind the door. So it's still online, online businesses. Either it could be e-commerce, but I will, I will not have to do with deal with maybe drop shipping. So it will not be me that we have to be doing the actual meeting. What is the best decision you have made as a leader? The best decision I'll say, um, I'll still say it still revolve around this online, online marketing because before this time, I was a teacher because the state of my country, where we have been trained that when you leave school, you go get government job and government job is not available. So you have to go for the private agency. And because those private agency knows that we do not have choice. So they try to do whatsoever they like. So when this opportunity, um, to be an online marketer came in like two kids. I'll say it's like the best opportunity ever. Even though when I started, it was like you are leaving the known for the unknown because I have to leave my job, go and learn it full time, and they have to do it. So it's like it's like a crazy decision, but it's worth it at the long run. And how did you raise the money to start your business?
How did you raise the capital to start your business? Okay, now I said I was teaching. So by that time, I was into this, um, we call it cooperative society. So I was contributing there. And when the pandemic started, our salary has to be to be slashed, I think, into one over three. That was what we were given. So it doesn't afford me even to cater for myself, not to talk of saving. And the rule of the community said, whenever you default bringing savings, they will deduct from the actual one that you get. So I was like, this is crazy. I don't have what to bring again. And what I have already, he said, you're going to be deducting from it. So I have to go and stop them. I'm no longer interested. So I got the money. So I, I used the money to transform myself to my place of uh, learning. And then at a time when it also got robbed, I seek for financial support from an home pro and gave me and it's getting me gone. Why are you an entrepreneur? I would say I'm an entrepreneur because I love to work myself for myself and earn my money. So that's one of the major reasons. And let, I would say it's been born from the fact when I said I was raised by entrepreneurial parents. And I can remember my, my mom then, he uh, told told me this story, why he, she too didn't go into the white collar job because at our time, during our time, it was very easy to secure a job. But she said she's not going for that. She would rather go for her business. She, would, she said she liked to make her own money. So, you know, hearing that over and over again created in me that interest that you can work for yourself and earn your own money. So that's what's brought me to that. What are your goals for your brand? What do you want your brand to be known as? Okay. If, if okay, yeah, although it's not it's not too too big, it's something that is achievable with time. I will want to be known. Just like Neil Patel, we know a well-known brand that is recognized all over the world. If you could have dinner with anyone, who would you have dinner with, and what conversation would you have with that person? Okay, if I'm to have dinner with somebody. Well, I'll say it's my mom. And conversation I would have with her will be around taking care of her, making her proud. My, what I have uh, in plan to take care of her and make her proud. Is there an event that you would like to redo in life? I think there are a couple of us. Uh, my graduation from the university is an event. If I had opportunity, uh, I'll redo it because I wasn't given the, the opportunity to, to be there physically. So if I, if I have the opportunity, I will do it so that I can have the feel of how it goes. Okay. And what do you do when you hit a bump in the road? How do you reset and refocus? Well, when I hit the head of the road, I know that here I stay, Nobody's coming to save. So 
There is no option than to keep going. Nobody celebrates a failure. It's until you're successful, that's when the effort is being glorified. What can, um, what book would you recommend and why? Okay, I will recommend this book by Sabri Subi, Sell Like Crazy. Um, and the reason is because it, it reveals how, let me say, a nobody can become somebody with determination, with the right steps, with the right action. So that's, that's the book I would recommend. Is it didn't focus only on the selling as, as a title to ease, but it also helped with building the mindset, most especially if one wants to be an entrepreneur and a successful one like that. What is your purpose in life? Why are you here? Did you hear me? What is your purpose in life and why are you here? Yeah. What is your purpose in life and why are you here? Well, I'll say my purpose is to transform lives. My purpose is to touch somebody's life and make somebody an achiever. So I'll say I, I am called to be a transformer, a transformer of lives. Where do you get your motivation and your grit? Who motivates you? Okay, let me say heartily, my late dad, because when I, I look back at the way he operates, he was an illiterate and is into this um, construction aspects that we call here as brick lane, but the way he operates the brick lane business, even though it was an illiterate, marvels me. So he, he was an illiterate, he couldn't, he couldn't write. He only managed to write his name, but then he named uh, his business, you know, S.O. Velo, Building contractor, he has a letter headed, he has a business card, he operates with big people despite an illiterate that can hardly write his name. So he's a motivation to me. If you conducted this interview, what is the one question you would have asked yourself? I want you to ask the question and answer it. Okay, uh, please, can you get me the question again? Mm -hmm. If you could, we're going to switch roles. If you was conducting this interview, what is the one question you would have asked yourself? I want you to okay. ask the question and answer it. Okay, let me think. I'll say... Why did you start? Of uh, why did you start? What are you doing? Now let me answer the question. The answer is, I started. I okay. I started because one, I am passionate for business, and I also passionate for having a business of myself, and. I, I hear a kind of person that believes in action. So I start because I knew there must be an action. I'm an action person. And because I love to help people. And at the same time, I also love to, like, not working for somebody, or at least 
working with rather than working for. So I started because of that. And you talked about you started out on Fiverr. Are you still on Fiverr or did you transfer all of your business to yourself? I quit Fiverr, but I retained Upwork. And the reason why I quitted Fiverr, you know, they have this the policy and it's, it was very hard to, to keep up with. So I was having my accounts been taken down, been uploading, been taken down, you know, and it's affecting naturally. So I, the reason why I sustained that upwork is because, you know, most of the time I even use it as a, a medium of payments because we know in the online world, there are, there are a lot of fraud and then people tend not to, to trust people especially when it has come with fund. So, and also to safeguard myself, if I work for somebody and I was not, I don't have the hope of me paying, the person also can default. So if the person gave me the money, there's tendency that I also can default. And this on Upwork has this avenue for um, a payment whereby a, a client will leave money in a scroll. So, it's not available for myself. It's not available for the clients, but at least it gives me the, the hope of getting my money and also give the client the hope of getting the work done. So then I, I retain it, uh, the hope of because of that. So as soon as that as a gap between myself and my clients. We come to the part of our interview. It's called Rapid Round of Fun. I'm going to ask you a series of questions and I want you to give me very quick answers. If okay. there's something you desire not to answer, feel free to say pass. Are you ready okay. for the rapid round of fun? Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Your first job. My first job was teaching, teaching at a primary school. Your favorite color? My favorite color is purple. Your ideal car? My ideal car is um, Rose Royce. Your favorite <laughs> singer or rapper? Um, is, um, oh, forgetting the name again, is Osinachi. Your favorite dance song? You said your favorite dance song? Dancing. I, I don't really have a favorite dance song. Whatever is danceable. Work out or hit the couch? Walk out. Your favorite holiday? My favorite holiday is um, Christmas. Ola Ronke, Ola Ronke, thank yes. you so much for joining us on Black Entrepreneur Experience Podcast. Before we let yes. you go, share with our audience the best way for them to connect with you and to do business with you. And feel free to leave all your social media handles. Okay, the best way to connect with me is one through my website, that's www.ronkebest.com. Uh, Rocky Best Digital, rather, www.ronkybestdigital.com and on Facebook at RonkyBest underscore digital and on Instagram, RonkyBest Digital and also on LinkedIn, RonkyBest Digital. Thank you. That's a wrap. Thank you so much for having me with you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.